just entered this age that we call big data. Now, this means that many devices are producing data that we need to process, that we need to store, that we need to do something with. And we want to do this in an ever faster way. We want to have real-time information from all these devices. So there is a great demand right now to have more data storage and faster computation. And so doing basic research into what are sort of the limits of this kind of computation data storage, I believe is very important for us to really know how far we can drive this. We are here in one of the laboratories in the IBM Armadan Research Center in San Jose, California. In this laboratory, we're using very specialized tools to be able to move atoms and to see atoms and to work with atoms. In order to do this, we have a room full of electronic equipment that we're in right now. This is, in the end, is the control room. And then we currently have two microscopes that are controlled from this control room here. And that's where we actually have our atoms. That's where all the action is really taking place. So in order to highlight the beauty and the fun that you can have with being able to work with atoms, we figured it would be fantastic to show something to the everyday audience that they can understand, that they can relate to, and maybe get them interested into the science sort of as a, as, a, as a secondary thought. And so we created a movie called The Boy and His Adam. And in this movie, we have two characters, the boy named Adam and his Adam as a friend. And the Adam finds the boy, they play together, they jump together, they, they, they just interact with each other. And so it tells a very emotional story, a very human story, but based on individual atoms. Every one of the frames is made from you know, a few atoms, a hundred atoms or so, and so we rearrange those atoms to tell a story. In order to make a movie, we actually had to come up with a design that shows the emotion of the character Adam with very few atoms, with very few dots. And so we hired an animation firm to come up with as few dots as possible and still be able to tell that story. Now, let me put this in perspective. In my laboratory, we created 242 individual frames, and each one of those frames contains on the order of 100 atoms or so, in total, we believe we moved something on the order of five to 10,000 atoms to make this movie all by hand. We don't have any automation of this. There's a large demand for, for data storage. And this demand is actually increasing as we not only have, have human-created information, but we have a lot of information that is created by video cameras and other equipment. So there's a very much increased demand for data storage. And so, you might wonder, how many atoms does it take to do data storage? And that's kind of the, the, the questions that we can answer in my laboratory here. Um, nowadays, if you put information on a very dense memory, like the magnetic hard disk that you have in your, in your computer, then it takes on the order of one million atoms to store one bit of information. A bit is the basic, basic unit of, of information. It's a zero and a one. And all movies, all everything is based on being able to store these bits. So it takes about one million atoms. Now we showed uh, last year that we can actually reduce that number to 12. We can store the same information, one bit, on only 12 atoms. So about 100,000 times smaller. This could have huge implications to, to, uh, to, to storage technologies. If we could really harness this in an everyday environment, then we could correspondingly store 100,000 times more information on the same volume of space. That means, you know, instead of storing one movie, you could store 100 thousand movies on the same space. I think that we are, as a, as a society, sort of at the beginning of this computer revolution, and we will actually apply computation to many, many things that we doubt nowadays maybe not even think about. Um, so I think there is still a lot of, lot of space to explore both basic science, but also the technological, technological um, implications of this basic science. Thank you.